Last week we had so much actual like, geek news to talk about. I kind of didn't talk about what I've been doing over my little summer break. I caught up completely with The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. First time in about two years, I'm up to date with that. I watched all of Barry. Everybody who's into this podcast should be watching Barry. It's really good. Platinum's Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. And this Friday, two days time, I will be retiring undefeated from Crash Team Racing. Uh, I'll have got three gold tiers in a row and three global top 5% decals in a row. So we did a poll and it was what shall I play next? Because I keep buying games and not playing them. 45% Batman Arkham Knight, 44% Horizon Zero Dawn. So I will be playing Batman Arkham Knight. If you're a member of PlayStation Plus, it's free to download this month. So that's why I have it. It's absolutely free. Fucking PlayStation. I'm what? just I'm just bitter. Yeah. You know, I've, I've got the Xbox. I mean, are you going to get a PS5? Because I would love to be able to like play online with you. Like, e- these... Eventually. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, like, I'd like to get a Switch and even the, the kind of like, I, I need a job, basically. <laughs> so if anybody is out there, you need... Um... Or if 30 people suddenly want to become patrons today, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah that, w- that would be awesome. I need... Yeah, I, I need a PlayStation, and uh, I need a job to get a PlayStation. I need a Switch, too. So uh, if you're looking for a proofreader, an editor, somebody to do anything, I will I will take anything at this point. Well, when the PS5 comes out, you could get, like, a cheap PS4 Pro. I might end up doing that. Yeah. That's, it was kind of a fluke that I managed to get Xbox One. I had a 360 for ages, and then... Uh, I think one of the Fallout games was coming out on Xbox One, and I was like, I have to have that. And yeah. so I made it like a big campaign for like either my birthday or Christmas. I want an Xbox One. I want yeah. nothing else. And I got the Xbox because I had friends in the States who all have Xboxes, yeah. and they were like, oh yeah, we'll play together. Of course, none of us thought about time zones. <laughs> Plus, you know, there's all the PlayStation exclusive games, and Xbox doesn't have anything exclusive. So there's, there's really no point to have an Xbox. PlayStation just released these pictures of... Uh... 10 PlayStation exclusives that they made these beautiful covers for. And I've been debating getting Horizon Zero Dawn, Game of the Year edition, for quite a while. It was one of these new covers. I was like, right, I'm finally taking the plunge. I think it was 16 quid with this beautiful new cover. Everybody's raving about that game. And it lost by 1%, but that'll probably be what I play next. So So, I'll let you know how I get on with Batman Arkham Knight. You've been playing a little bit of Batman Arkham City? Yeah, a little little bit, because my Xbox sucks. So it lets me play for about 20 minutes, and then it's like, nope, you're cut off. I'm going to shut down for like three hours and then you can play again for 20 minutes. Go outside, read yeah, a book. Yeah, uh, I think my, my Xbox thinks I need to do other stuff with my life. So yeah, I, I played a little bit of Return to Arkham City, uh, which is, is kind of cool. I've 20 got, minutes in, any kind of thoughts on it? Not not really, because the, like, the game's just kind of yeah. getting started. I think I've gotten up to the point with Harley Quinn, I keep getting killed. Um, that That's kind of how I am with most games. I, I just, I get killed a lot. I love these games, but I'm not very good at them. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to, like, figure out the controls and everything. And it's it's a very different sort of setup than most of the games I play, because I play a lot of, like, Skyrim and Fallout and Assassin's Creed and Arkham City. One, I, I don't like the over-the-shoulder view, especially because he's, like, off-center, and yeah. it just it messes with my perspective. And, like, yeah, I'm, I'm still getting used to the controls. Um mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I wish my Xbox would last longer so I could play longer. Yeah, Cause just you get know, a PS4 Pro. It'll yeah, solve all yeah. Your issues. Was... And then you'll be a Sony fanboy for life and yeah. play actually online games together, which yeah. will be good. Yeah, that'd be fun. You yeah. can see interesting videos of you know me flailing around and Jules like, going after these goals. Oh, we could get Assassin's Creed Unity. And we could do co-op missions on oh, Assassin's yeah. Creed Unity in Paris. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. Anyway, should we, yeah. should we crack on? It's a Titans only episode. So we did season one of Titans. A rewatch, and yeah. A rewatch and a first watch of <laughs> episode one of season two. Before we, we came on air, we briefly just talked. You said you enjoyed Titans more this time. I did, one, yeah. And I, I enjoyed but, it less this time. Like, why? What, what about it made you enjoy it less this time um, as compared to the first time? It's interesting. I, I watched it and it's still my favourite show tonally of the three DC streaming service shows, Doom so, Patrol, Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing very close second because as bad as it got, the tone was always kind of spot on. So I really like this tonally. I really enjoy the, the journey, but this time around, the destination, 
I didn't enjoy the destination the first time around, but it really hit me again how bad the overall main villain for this story was. And so I just generally, it's a, it's a, puts a bit of a black cloud across the whole season, how bad like the father villain was. We, we won't talk about season two yet, but I feel like that should have been the finale. I, I was going to say the yeah, same I mean, thing. It, and, and I've seen online reviews of, of season two so far, how a lot of people have said that like this was because season one didn't really end on a finale yeah i mean i believe in cliffhangers like i yeah. believe in them but at the time we were told they're removing it and they're putting it as the opener for season one for season two i don't know why really it didn't I serve don't, any purpose i don't no. think you know daisy johnson destroyer of worlds goes and meets carl mclaughlin her dad it's kind of been done you know the whole raven father thing i think that might even be one more that we've actually reviewed in the last 12 months that i couldn't think of last night when i was trying to come up with it so the whole overall arc and the whole overall plot is a big fail for me. And like I, said, I do enjoy the journey though. Like I enjoy some of the episodes where they're kind of getting to know each other and stuff. The hill I will die on is that the best part I think of the entire season is the nuclear family. Love them. Kind of wanted a little bit more of them, but you know they had to die when they died. And yeah, I think just the ending makes me like the show a lot less. For me, I think part of it this time around was I was just kind of watching it to remind myself what had happened, whereas the first time I was sort of watching it very critically. This time around, I kind of got swept up in the story a bit more. I did realize I do not like the actress who plays Rachel. There were times where she said things or did things and it didn't feel genuine. Like it was really coming from the character or yeah. like she didn't put the right emphasis into it. The kind of petulant teenager got played up a little too much in in certain instances i mean i get that she is a teenager and she's kind of had her life turned upside down her mother's been murdered in front of her etc 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 yeah i just i didn't really like the actress's performance in this dick grayson is amazing as always love starfire although her name i mean fucking coriander what stoned writer like oh coriander would be a good name for somebody and it's, it's like that's all i think about now when they, they, they talk about cory 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 and it's yeah. just like i think of the herb anyway uh i like gar as well I, I think he he adds kind of a nice lightness to it he sort of offsets dick's sort of morose moody gothamness. I like the fact that they explore Dick's struggles with control and violence yeah. and that he left being Robin because he didn't want to just be this guy who handles things with his fists and yet that's how he handles things yeah. and so he's, he's constantly kind of fighting with himself and it does bring up questions about that line separating superheroes from supervillains and, and how easily superheroes can cross the line. I mean, obviously Dick Grayson doesn't have superpowers, but I was talking about this with someone in relation to, to Superman, that you know he's kind of the most powerful person in the world and he could very easily go bad. And, and there have been storylines where Superman does go bad. And I think it's a very interesting concept to explore. It's, it's kind of explored in the boys. Doom Patrol does it a little bit. Like, you know, are, are our heroes really heroes or is there something kind of wrong with them? And, you know, they, they refer to Robin in t season one as a psychopath frequently. Well, he's frequently portrayed as a psychopath. Like, yeah, at the end yeah, of the whole season, I'm thinking, yeah, this guy is like a ticking time bomb. And I, I, I did like the dynamic between Dick and Jason as well. I mean, I really enjoy Jason Todd's character. Oh, God, he's great. I mean, the, the actor is just, like, spectacular. In, in this role. Again, it, it explored some, some more kind of complex issues with Dick and that, you know, he he walked away from Batman. He, you know, at one point he says, fuck Batman. He's this this kind of very, I don't need Batman. I don't, I'm, I'm rejecting that part of my life. And then Jason Todd comes in and he's the new Robin and Dick has to deal with all of these emotions about being replaced and like, why should I care if I'm being replaced? And you get to drive the Batmobile and th this kind of sort of sibling rivalry between the two of them while he is trying to be the more mature, more evolved person and kind of say, you need to get your shit together. You can't just go beating up cops because it's fun kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I think it's a really important. I've like before watching this show, I have no real idea about what the time i know what the titans is obviously who's in the group but i don't know the kind of history i like the moment where dick grayson cut the tracking chip out of his arm we see that in film and tv quite a lot you know people just take the scalp and just rummage around in their yeah. arm like it's nothing cyborg did it in doom Patrol yeah. as well. it's just this real symbolic idea that he is rejecting he wants to be his own person he's not rejecting maybe the lifestyle but he's rejecting kind of what batman was training him to be he believes you can have both maybe not like a wife and kid 
and go out doing this at night time but there is there is a compromise to be had and I'm really looking forward to him kind of continuing that journey through season two and hopefully we get the Nightwing suit up moment yeah and I'm just gonna <laughs> lose my mind I am I am waiting for that like so much I want I want to see Nightwing sort of emerge from from Dick Grayson and I think he's he's close Corey said to him you know so don't don't be Robin or no it was it was Wonder Girl she said be be something else she realized that she could do more good as a as a photojournalist than as Wonder Girl and that was kind of her way of moving on and and so she was sort of encouraging him to do the the same thing what did you think of the Grayson episode up to the point where we then move into the her and her father little bit at the end where he was in this alternate reality it was like a what if story where yeah. he Batman was going around killing people. I I felt that that went on a little long. I also felt this with the the Hank and Dawn story. It was a really weirdly placed episode, and it kind of killed the momentum. So we were building up, building up, building up, and then we just stop and take an entire episode to go back into Hank and Dawn's past. The truth is, you know, as interesting as those characters are, we didn't need their past. Do you know what's really interesting? When we saw the episode, the, the episode before Hank and Dawn episode. I, it was a really good like ending. You want oh what's going next? And I started the Hank and Dawn specific episode and stopped it after five minutes and bounced onto the next episode because you're right, it was an absolute momentum killer. And they're okay. I, I think they like most of the characters will be far better in season two. But I think you're right. There are some oddly placed episodes. I think it could be said of a lot of the season ones of these three shows we've had a little bit of a jumble, a little bit of a finding their feet kind of situation. But we're just about to have the first season two. I like to think a lot of these issues will be kind of ironed out. I like the idea of Batman having that bad day and going through Arkham and just killing everybody. Killing the Joker. Well, it thinks he kills the Joker. Yeah. Dick tells him he hasn't. And then he goes to finish the job. Like, that is just... Oh, that's a story I'd yeah, love I to mean, like, Game I'd love to play. If any villain was going to make Batman cross that line, it would be the Joker, yeah. I think. Although I don't know... I don't know that Batman could actually kill the Joker because I feel like the two characters need each other. Yeah. And, and and the Joker has mentioned that sentiment a few times in, in various films and, and comics that they have this very symbiotic relationship mm. and they aren't that far from each other. I just I enjoy the relationship between the Joker and Batman yeah. so much. Um, it's interesting that um, in this reality, Alfred was dead and Commissioner Gordon was dead. So these two kind of older male figures in his life were both gone and that was the moment where he just snapped. <laughs> yeah. He went on this killing spree. But I, I did enjoy that episode. That's probably my favourite episode, but if I could have sliced the real world father-daughter bit off the end, that would have been like a yeah. great episode. The other thing I would have liked... And, you know, I realize it's in the title, Titans. There are comics. They're not really gearing this to people who don't read the comics. It's it's very much geared towards fans of the Titans. But towards the end of the season, they just started throwing around the title Titans and, and referring to, you know, Wonder Girl, Hawk and Dove, and Dick Grayson's Robin as the Titans. And they didn't really let us know, like, as they introduced these various characters, they didn't let us know that there had been a previous Titans team. It wouldn't have taken very much of a line here or there earlier in the season just to sort of clarify that there was previously a Titans team that Dick was involved in and these were the people who were in it so that when in season two when Jason Todd's Robin says the Titans are back we kind of have some some more context for that because I mean the other thing with these shows and these films is like as comic book readers we know they aren't always completely faithful to the stories they they sort of pick and choose which material they want to adapt they come up with new stories with kind of similar origins so it's it's entirely possible that like this show could have been the formation of the first Titans team. But then it felt like at some point towards the end of season one, they decided, oh no, we want there to actually have been Titans previously. This is the new Titans. And that was just kind of a quibble for me. Not good storytelling. They described Doom Manor as being on Danny Street, which I thought was interesting. That was interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, that was one of the things I noticed. Like, I'm guessing this is a Doom Patrol that's in the future from the Doom Patrol series that we're watching. The, the Doom Patrol we see in Titans is very different from the Doom Patrol we see in the TV very show. Yeah. The only way I could reconcile that was to think that this Doom Patrol... Because uh, Cliff mentions that the Chief had recently learned to walk again, which didn't come up in Season 1 mm. of Doom Patrol at all. So I just kind of presumed it was like a future... The Titans takes place further in the future than the Doom Patrol series does. That'd be cool, yeah. Um, I like that Larry looks a lot better in the TV, in the, uh, the, his, the, the mouth. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, 
It was, I mean, watching the Doom Patrol, I forgot that they'd had the animated mouth in Titans, but watching the Doom Patrol thing, that was one of the questions I always have, like, how does he eat? Like, where is his, like, why doesn't he have a mouth hole? And then I saw the mouth hole and it was like, no, 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 no. So as much as I've not enjoyed season one the, on this watch around, everything up to the point where, you know, where she kills her father, obviously, and she walks out and you can tell it's been filmed like a year later because she looks entirely different. That is like the the end point as far as I'm concerned. Everything up before that is what should have been season one. I was glad, but also frustrated that it was such a very easy resolution to this huge big bad. Like I said, I didn't enjoy the destination in season one, so I'm happy to say that it's for the best. Swept aside, let's crack on with new stories now in season two. But just, I mean, super easy. It, super it easy. Dar held her hand. That broke the spell. She got into Dick's brain. They did a kind of catch with the Flying Graysons. That broke his spell. And then she walked out and basically said, oh, hey, Dad. And her powers came out and killed him. And that was it. I felt like like this episode was the season finale that season one needed. I also had a problem with it. that This episode had three endings in it. Like, rather than a full cohesive episode, it was like three little stories put together to make up the, like, 40, 50-minute time slot that they had to fill. Her killing her dad... Like you said, way too easy, way too quick. And that, that kind of felt like an ending as well. Do you know well. what it reminded me of? You watched Heroes, didn't you? Yeah. You know, the season finale of, I think, well, all of the seasons of Heroes, 20 minutes from the end, it would say season two. And you'd kind of like begin like midway through the season one finale. That's what it felt like to me. But again, it, it felt a little bit peculiar, especially because you could tell some of them had aged. Um, it was a bit weird, but... Yeah, we did kind of get three finales, or like a finale and then like a beginning. It yeah, was... it was it was like a finale and then an epilogue and then a post epilogue. After Rachel kills her father, um, we get the Batman thing. I'm really liking Glenn, but that voice is going to kill me. I was thinking the same thing. Oh, I was just like, stick a fondue fork in my knee, I in my kind bad of, knee. I kind of wish that like they just had him speak in his normal accent. I mean, if we can have a British Charles Xavier who's from New York, we can have a British Bruce Wayne who's from Gotham City. Here's an idea. There are 10,000 actors in America that would kill to play Bruce Wayne. Let's cast an American. I don't understand. I love him so much. But if that's the best he can do, go home. Yeah, go home I and was, give us more I was, Mormont, you know. I was quite disappointed. Particularly since through like all of season one, we had little glimpses of Batman. You know, like the, the, the cowl and shadow or an arm out of the rubble or, you know... He was this very sort of mysterious, looming, ominous figure, and then we finally see Bruce Wayne, and he's a dad. And, I mean, I get that, like, yeah, he is actually a dad, you know, he keeps adopting these these boys, and having his, his own biological son as well with Damien, but, yeah, I, I felt the, the build-up was so much that I wanted more from the, our first encounter with Bruce Wayne. Would you have preferred, I probably would, would you have preferred, like, an over-the-camera, we see the back of his head, and Dick is just talking to him, and we get yeah. no kind of, yeah. I would have liked, kind of like, the clock scene again. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We talked about last week, Batman can be the myth. You know, he doesn't need to be on he, the screen. He doesn't need to be on he the screen. He can be talked about, and that's and almost better sometimes. It is. I think it's more powerful when he's not the focus of the screen and that he is a little bit mysterious. And just, you know, everything we know about Bruce Wayne and Batman, he's he's a very stoic figure. I mean, you know, yeah, he has his public face of being the playboy and whatever, but this was in his house with his ward, who he's raised since Dick was 12. He's not going to be this this kind of... Like, I can't imagine him as a warm, fuzzy father figure, and that's kind of, like, he felt more like Alfred. Yeah, it didn't feel like Bruce Wayne's words. It was yeah. a real scripting issue. Um, um, but, I mean, like, he... Dick's part of the conversation, I felt, yeah, yeah. That, that was great. And again, that was a bit more of him, I'm, I'm thinking of adapting, and that was kind of like a night wingy conversation, yeah. which was exciting as well. Yeah, and, and he kind of mentioned that, you know, he wanted to go back to San Francisco, and, and again, I think the mention of San Francisco would have been more significant if they'd hide the Titans to it, the, the previous Titans team to it earlier in the season, or at least just let us know that the Titans were a thing that already existed. Because I kind of watched the show thinking that this was going to be the first creation of a Titans team. And then we have kind of Dick's closure with Bruce Wayne. I almost hope we don't see him again yeah, I, I, I don't. Season. I don't really feel like we need to see him. Yeah. He was too, too nice as Bruce Wayne. He didn't have a hole in his soul. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I, I do imagine that that Bruce really deeply cares for his Robins, but, you know, he's a damaged person, and 
I don't think he expresses that the right way. I think, like, you know, what Dick said was fairly accurate. You did what you knew. You did the best you could, and you did what you thought was best for me to help me through what I was going through. It just wasn't actually the right thing. And I don't blame you for that. And then, you know, the third story was them going to the Titans hideout. And I have to be honest, I everything from them, like, driving on the bridge till it ended, I loved. It felt to me that somebody was finally in control. This, the show finally had a momentum that it zigged and zagged in season one, but it kind of has a momentum. And I honestly like left with a bit of a smile on my face thinking, I'm looking forward to what this show is going to show me in season two. Seeing Jason Todd and Gar and Dick Grayson and... Rachel. Rachel walking around, like seeing the rooms and stuff. I felt like, okay, this is a group of people I quite like to watch. My problem is that if you think about those four, you think of uh, Coriander, you think of Hawk, you think of Dove... You think of Wonder Girl. You think the fact that we've seen um, Superboy and Crypto the dog. Aqualad is going to be in this as well. I feel like I'm missing somebody. I just get the impression that all of these people are going to converge. And that's a big old group of people. What, what are your thoughts on that as a cast size? I'm excited to see the team come together. Like, I I really loved Wonder Girl. I want more of oh, her. Oh, she's so good. She yeah. should be the leader of the team. She I, should. Um, I would I absolutely mean, have her as leader of the team. Yeah, because, like, Dick has the same problem that Batman has with being a leader. He's he's a very damaged individual, yeah. and... You she know, put one, it really well. Wonder Woman defends the innocent. innocent. Batman punishes the, the, um, the, guilty. the guilty. So yeah. you want a defender of the innocent leading the team, don't you? Yeah. I think Wonder Woman is really kind of the leader of the Justice League, even though it people think it's like either Superman or Batman or some sort of co-thing. I think yeah. like Wonder Woman is kind of the heart of the team, and I think Wonder Girl is sort of the similar thing for, for the Titans. She's, one, the most evolved out of all of them, and the most well-balanced and well-adjusted. I want to see all of these characters, so I'm not so much thinking about the cast being overwhelming as just I want to see these characters on TV, I want to see them interacting with each other. I think if it's done right, it can be really, really well. Yeah. But like as we've we've discussed with other shows, balancing a large cast is quite a difficult thing to do. It will require a lot of finesse from the writers and the director and the actors to really pull this off and make it seem like a cohesive whole and not like we're just drowning in all of these other characters. Yeah. That we, we talked about this in the Arrowverse that, you know, when they, they have everybody standing around the room, about like half of them are superfluous. I was just about to talk about <laughs> the people who just stand by the monitors with their yeah. hand kind of propped up, you know? Yeah, so I think as long as they justify everyone's presence, it'll be really great. We'll just have to cross our fingers that we don't end up with a lot of, you know, like, Superboy just sort of standing off in the background while Dick is extolling something. Yeah. Um, um, I'd like it maybe if we can have the four, maybe Corey, I assume, will come back. The five's like the core team, but if they're doing something down by the water, maybe they call out, call out. If they're doing something here, they'll call in, like, extras. But they've got to be very careful to not make the show kind of top-heavy so that it falls in on itself, because I really liked... I think my... Obviously, I'm looking back with, like, rose-tinted spectacles, but my favourite Arrow seasons were where there were three of them. Their trio their trinity and then if they if something big was going down they'd call in Roy Harper they'd call in Speedy who would don the red uniforms and that was kind of it then they would go back again and you'd have this little core team so I do worry that we're going to get a Flash situation because I think Flash is the worst like you said those rooms where Barry and um, Nora arguing who else is in the room Joe Cecile Cecile, Iris Iris Sherlock Cisco Caitlin yeah Dibney They'll all just be standing there as props. You know, one will be leaning on a monitor, a couple will be standing by a wall. And it's like a little committee session. And that just, I've never really got on with that. And that's that's one of the main reasons. I know it's a strange reason, but it's one of the main reasons Flash has kind of gone down my list of kind of favourites because they just do not know what to do with their big cast. And, every, and when everybody knows people's secret identities as well, I yeah. struggle with that. I mean, everybody knows who Flash is these days. So yeah, we'll, we'll monitor how that goes. But... I feel I feel good. I feel good going into the rest of this season. Like it doesn't often happen, you know. This should have been the season one finale, and maybe they could have extended the San Fran bit into the whole episode and to move into series two. But see, I think ending with the formation of the new Titans team yeah. should have been the end of season one. Yeah, that's it should. Fair it, yeah. Like it's kind of like a mission statement. You know, okay, we we defeated this guy together. Our alliance is now an actual team. We're we're family. We're together. We're we're going forward as a group, and this is the new normal. Yeah. And then season two could have started with that. Presumably, for the rest of this season, we're going to get flashbacks to this other Titans team. 
obviously Gar wasn't part of the original team, but when he walked into that room, we saw them all in their uniforms yeah. and their like four little bits in the wall. I think we'll get some flashbacks, but yeah, I'm really interested to see how they incorporate these new characters because a great Superboy, a great Nightwing, and a great Wonder Girl as like a kind of trinity, and then having like an Aqualad, having Raven, that's exciting. That's yeah. like a, that's like a proxy Justice League that the Arrowverse may never give us. I'm all in. I'm excited to see what comes next. Even with our complaints about season one, Titans is a very high quality show. You can tell that this is kind of the DC streaming universe's flagship show. They've they've really wanted to, to kind of emphasize the quality, the tone, the atmosphere. They've put a lot into it. I think the, the problems with the first season are just kind of standard issues that people have with first seasons, figuring out what information to give when things get written in the script then they get cut out in post-production and not everything lines up quite the way it should because of that yeah i mean my my complaints with season one are fairly trivial for the most part and if season two continues i have a hard time judging season two based on this first episode because it feels like an ending to season one as as an ending to season one i think it's a spectacular ending it shows a lot of promise for the rest of season two i'm really excited to see what happens with it i really want to see nightwing come out this season and yeah, I just I, I hope they manage to balance the large cast. And that there's no more Batman. Yeah, no more Batman. We, and, we, and we love Batman, and I love Ian Glenn, but I don't want to see that. Every not week. not this Batman, no. I just I don't see Bruce aging into a warm and fuzzy person. I really don't. I believe that like you know, out of the Bat family, Alfred is the mother. Bruce Wayne is like the quintessential 1950s father who believes in like a firm hand and father knows best and and that kind of thing. But you know, when you want the the soft and cuddly stuff, you get it from Alfred. It just it doesn't ring true coming from Bruce Wayne. How excited do you get when they say, "Yeah, Bruce is with the Justice League halfway around the world"? I get very excited yeah. by that. Yeah, it just makes me think that one day we'll get you know. A couple I don't of weird think I, suited appearances. I don't think so. If you like what we do, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash geek nerd. We have loads of bonus content for our patrons. Starting we have at, a new t-shirt variation. We, yeah, we have a new t-shirt well. coming up on our $10 tier. Um, you get access to all the bonus content at a $1 tier. We have some cool coasters for $20. Yeah, just lots of neat rewards. Plus you get access to us and all of our splendor. Um, you can also find us on Facebook. at facebook.com forward slash the geekly and Twitter as always at geek nerd pod plus our website geeknerdpod.com. And this weekend on Patreon, our extended interview with Lex is going up. Yay. So if you're a patron, you get a little bit of extra. If, if you're not a patron, you can get kind of a, a snippet of what we talked about. And uh, if you like it, let us know, and we will definitely be doing more of those. Yeah. See you See later. Ya.